So here it is. Merry Christmas. Everybody's having fun. Hello, it's David. And whilst Christmas brings Noddy Holder another million pounds, it's brought me a number of gifts from PCBWay, my channel sponsor, which is very kind of them. Among them was this mug, which is uh, which is very nice, and this uh, this notebook here. But neither of those are very electronic-y. There was, however, this flashy PCB Christmas tree. Now this tree is very funky. It takes a single CR2032 uh, coin cell battery here, and there's a little SMD switch on the bottom, and it flashes like a good one. Now I put this on my real tree, and the uh, the first thing I noticed was that it is bright. It's very bright. I've had to turn the exposure down on here. That's how bright it is. The next day it wasn't quite so bright, and by the third day it was actually only flashing red. So let's find out what on earth is going on here, and see if we can have a bit of a hack at it. Before that though, let me just mention that PCBWay offer a variety of maker-related services that may be worth a minute or two of your time to have a look at. Obviously, PCB manufacture goes with the name, but perhaps CNC milling, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, or injection moulding are capabilities that could kickstart your maker project. Keep your eyes open for discounts and other offers too. At the time of recording, there are a variety of Christmas-themed offers and a number of prototyping and assembly discounts available on the website. There is also a substantial community-contributed project section, as well as off-the-shelf modules available for purchase. This very Christmas tree decoration is actually one such example, and it's linked in down below. OK, so when I first looked at this, I assumed that there was going to be some sort of small uh, few pence microcontroller on here controlling all of these LEDs but you can see there's only LEDs on the front side and on the back side we've only got the coin cell holder and there's nothing hiding in there the uh, the switch at the bottom here and more LEDs so how does this work I had a quick look on the page uh, that uh, the designer had linked this is uh, at Salvatore uh, dot Riccardi and he includes the schematic. The schematic is, is very basic. It's just battery, all these LEDs in parallel, switch to control them. Um, which makes me wonder, where are the current limiting resistors? What makes them flash? So further digging, and he links in some AliExpress LEDs that um, purport to uh, be auto flashing, be RGB in color. And he says that they don't require a dropper resistor. Now, that may be true, but I couldn't find any data sheet about these specific ones. There's lots of different types of these. I think they're 0807s, um, RGB colours, uh, with fast and slow flash. And yeah, basically, I'm um, not entirely sure which ones he's used. But to me, it seems a bit excessive to not have any dropper resistance. And most of the data sheets that I did find suggested that you should probably have one resistor per uh, LED because you ought not wire these up in series they do need to be in parallel and if they are in parallel then just um, tiny variations in the manufacturing process can cause a voltage spike across one compared to the others and, and you'll get a blow. So these may be uh, very different to the uh, the archetypal ones that I found but um, still they are very bright and I think they probably could do with a um, a resistor in line because uh, they do not seem to last very long. So just out of interest, let's get the uh, let's get the multimeter on here. I'm going to pop it into diode test mode, and let's see if we can get across a couple of the terminals on the on one of these. I'm guessing it's there and there. Nothing. Oh. Half a volt, but no action. Nothing there. Aha, there we go. 
There we are. So you can see the self. We're actually powering the whole board. I don't know. Can you pick that out on the camera? Um, and the drop voltage is obviously dropping because everything's in parallel, and we're getting some some screwy results. But so it must be down to um, those very same micro variations in manufacturing that causes the flashing to become um, asynchronous. And that's how we get the lovely design. But still, it does seem very, uh, very intense and, and somewhat unregulated. Let's pop our battery back in. So the way this switch works down here is there's just these two contacts. Uh, well, there's three contacts. This one's unused, so that's in that position. And when we throw the, uh, the switch, we obviously just join these two here and away the pulsing goes. So we can bring our meter back in in milliamp range. And we'll bridge those two contacts ourselves and see what sort of current this is pulling. Well, it's jumping around a little bit, but it's uh, spiking at about, oh, there was a 30, 30 something milliamps there. Now these are all in parallel. So uh, no one of these obviously is drawing the 30 milliamps itself. Well, unless my meter can't respond in time, I suppose. But with the brightness that they are putting out and the fact that the uh, the battery only lasted a few days with it with it being run for a few hours a day, I think we can probably do something to uh, reduce the the intensity. Now the obvious thing is we'll just put a, a resistor in series. Um, but where could we put it? The way this switch works here, we've got these two terminals, and there's a short run there from there to that via. I wonder if we could break that connection and put in a little SMD resistor there, probably 330 ohms, maybe um, maybe a 1K. Uh, can't see anywhere else obvious because they're all in parallel. So that's the only place where, yeah, that's the only obvious place where we could insert something. I mean, we could break this trace here, I suppose, but right next to the, uh, right next to that particular terminal of the switch uh, would make sense to me. So uh, let's do a little bit of mathematics and see what uh, what we think we might need. Okay, so let's go through some calculations. I couldn't find anywhere in the packaging for my CR2032s anywhere where it states the actual battery capacity. There's a lot of information about, you know, don't swallow it, you'll be dead in two hours, and things like this, and how you've got to recycle them properly, but um, they're very dull, and they just say 2032, 3 volts, China. So I did a bit of a, a Google search, and the only thing that popped up was a PDF uh, for an Energizer CR2032. No idea if that's the real one here, but that says that the typical capacity is about 235 milliamp hours down to about two volts. Now, what we saw before was that uh, after a couple of days, only the red LEDs came on, and I think that's probably because the forward voltage for the red LEDs is lower than that for the uh, the green and the blue, consequently, um, they last the longest. So that implies we are probably, you know, by the time it's um, it's down to that uh, 235, we are probably just seeing the red only. So let's take 235 as our working figure. Now we saw that roughly we were getting between you know 13 and 30 milliamps. So let's call that a 20 milliamp average drain. That's close enough to be a factor of 10. So we're going to estimate that we'll get you know, proper working capacity for about 10 hours currently. So yeah, that ties into a couple of days. If there's five hours a day, now you'd probably be running more than five hours a day, to be honest, but so we're probably starting to see problems by the end of day two. So if we remember our Ohm's law and we uh, we pop it in our uh, GCSE level 
ohm's law triangle here. If we're trying to find our resistance, we cover that up and it's going to be voltage over current. So V equals IR is ohm's law. So V over I gives us the uh, resistance. Now it's an effective resistance. This is not actually a resistive load. These are non-linear devices. These are, these are diodes and they're flashing and jumping all over the place as we saw. So I'm going to call this effective resistance, which is going to be three volts over 20 milliamps, which gets us about 150 effective ohms. Not real. These are not, these are not real resistance values, but we'll, we can work with this for back of envelope stuff. So 150 equivalent ohms, shall we say. So that's a relatively nice round number. Let's slap another round number on it. So 820 ohms, that's a standard um, resistor size. And in my pack of uh, 0802 resistors here, I've got some 820s available. So that's a nice size. Next one up is 1K in my book. So let's uh, add the 820 on, and that would bring us up to approximately 970, which again is going to be close enough to 1,000 that I'm calling it 1K. So with our new effective resistance of 1,000 ohms, we can come back to our Ohm's Law uh, triangle again, and this time we want to evaluate the current, so we cover up I and we get V over R. So it's 3 volts over a 1,000 ohms. That's corresponds to three milliamps. In effect, 3,000 millivolts over 1,000 ohms, three milliamps. Therefore, with a 235 milliamp starting position, running this time at three milliamps instead of 20, we should get around 80 hours of usable time, a factor of eight increase over our original figure. So that should take it from a day's good use to a week's good use. Now, it'll be dimmer, clearly, but the question is how much dimmer? And bearing in mind this is going to be hanging on a tree that is mostly in the dark with, you know, it's got its own flashing lights on, but this doesn't have to outshine them, and really it was. Is that going to be sufficient? And of course, if that turns out to be too dim, we can just change the value of our 820 here and try again. But I think that's likely to be perfectly reasonable running these LEDs on an average of three milliamps, I think, for Christmas tree decoration should be perfectly fine. So let's have a look at this track down here and see what we can do about chopping it up. OK, so to cut this track, what I'm going to do is to, uh, to hold the board down with my fingers uh, as far away from it as uh, from the area of interest as possible and use my Stanley knife to, uh, to just try and cut across a point about halfway along the, uh, the trace there. So I'll just go over that a couple of times. This is never a neat or precise business. Let's just test that. OK, we've broken our trace. OK, now the next thing we have to do is to try and remove some uh, of the solder mask from this side of the gap such that we have something to solder to. So let's bring in an 0805 component to compare the size. So if we were to solder half of our component to the, uh, the leg there of the switch, then the other half of the component is going to have to be somewhere before, basically halfway before, I think, where we've cut our track and that elbow. So we need to remove some solder mask from there. I don't think there's ever a good way of doing this. Uh, we just have to get involved with a bit of light scratching. Mm. 
Now we only want to scratch away the solder mask itself. We obviously don't want to scratch away the copper. So be prepared to clean it and test it a few times. There we go. To me, I think we have something to work with. I do have some ultra fine solder somewhere, but I wouldn't know where to look for it. Pressing down as so I reflow that. Now let's see if I can get some solder in on that uh, that track side. Turn my turn my switch off on this. There we go. Now there's a nice big blob of solder on both edges. And if we throw the switch, there we go. Lights are blinking with a much reduced intensity, but I think it still looks rather charming. Let's get that cleaned up. So there we go. We're blinking away in multicolors as the design intended. It's not quite as uh, blindingly bright as it was when we started and okay that may not be the neatest solution in the world but it's tucked away there down at the bottom probably on the back side as we would hang it on the tree and i'm not sure that's the most terrible hack the world has ever seen of course if this were uh, gadget uk 164's channel he would have reflowed that umpteen times to make that absolutely perfectly perpendicular stri uh, straight. But um, hey, I'm not you, Gadget. And if we were really being particularly anal, we would uh, dab some nail varnish or similar just on the little bit of exposed copper there that I've left behind after cutting that trace. But um, once again, that's not my style. So thank you very much to PCBWay for the uh, the kind gifts and uh, i'm going to get this back on the tree and hopefully this will now last a few more days thanks for watching see you next time just as a quick postscript um i noticed having hung it up and left it running for a little while that actually i was getting very few green and blues with the uh, uh with the 820 ohm on there um and I suspect that's because the uh, the drop is just a bit too much uh, for the uh, the higher power colours. So um, I have actually reduced uh, my SMD resistor there down to a uh, 330 ohm one. So the calculations were one as before. Obviously, that will be roughly now half the lifespan. Uh, you still see a few flashes of green and blue. There are fewer uh, than uh, though if it's running in completely full power. But 10 hours battery life, just not sufficient, I don't think, for tree decoration. So I'm going to stick with that 330, and I'm going to be happy with that. So Merry Christmas, everybody.